1995, Japan. Ami Onuki and Yumi Yushimura form the pop rock group Puffy. They grow in popularity and by the year 2000 begin performing in the US. After a quick lawsuit over the name Puffy from none other than Puff Daddy. Puff Daddy. Wrong. They become known in the West as Puffy Ami Yumi. Soon after, they get recruited by Cartoon Network to do the theme song for the 2003 Teen Titans animated series. Teen Titans! And I guess Cartoon Network really liked working with Ami Yumi because the very next year in 2004, they were given their very own animated series. Hi Hi Puffy Ami Yumi. I'm going to be avoiding using the real theme song as much as possible because of copyright. So just take my word for it. It's a really good song. And uh, look it up on your own time if you want. Hi Hi Puffy Yami Yumi was created by Sam Register and ran 39 episodes from 2004 to 2006. It follows a fictionalized version of Ami and Yumi as they tour the world, play music, and get up to all kinds of silly adventures. And I want to stress like how weird it is that this show exists at all. In the 90s they were given animated series to like everyone left and right, whoever even remotely could potentially appeal to kids. But in the 2000s not as much. There were some DC shows of course, but a lot of cartoons in this era were just completely brand new IP. And while Puffy had some fans in North America, they were like relatively unknown at the time, outside of doing the Titans theme. But sure, let's give this Japanese band a whole ass cartoon in another continent. Makes, Makes sense, sense to, to me. me. Imagine you're like six or seven watching Cartoon Network, or if you're Canadian like me, YTV. And maybe you've seen like some anime, probably Pokemon, maybe a little bit of something else, but you aren't super aware of like what that even is or why it like feels different than other cartoons. And this show comes on and they're telling you that Puffy Ami Yumi is this world famous band that's super popular and you should be a fan of. And this is like, kind of the first time you've heard of them. They sound maybe vaguely familiar if you're familiar with the Titans theme song, but they're on TV, so you're just like, all right, I'll take your word for it. I guess Puffy Ami Yumi is a famous and successful band here in North America. Back in the day, you just kind of watched what was on, and this was on. And it actually wasn't this just like weird thing that they tried one time and it didn't end up working out. The show was actually successful. It ran for three whole seasons, which is a pretty good run. Truly a product of its time. I don't think a show like this could be made today, which is weird because J-pop and like K-pop groups are way more popular in North America now than they were in 2004, but hey, this is this is the way it was. I find Hi Hi Puffy Ami Yumi really interesting because it's like carbon dated to 2004. I've talked about how everything was just kind of everything in the early 2000s. This is the prime example. A cartoon about the band that did the theme song, the Teen Titans cartoon, that's based on the DC comic and heavily influenced by popular anime. And the Teen Titans connection is not arbitrary either. The two shows do share a producer creator as well as like a couple writers, but they really did like market it as if it was almost a spin off of Teen Titans. It wasn't just like fun trivia that you maybe know, oh hey, Puffy Ami Yumi, you know that show? They actually did the theme song for Teen Titans also. Cartoon Network was like, hey, you like Teen Titans? Watch this show about the band that made the theme song. And you're like, all right. They even had this featurette on the Teen Titans season one DVD promoting the upcoming show. Look, it's the Japanese pop band that did our theme song, Puffy Ami Yumi. I have some questions I've been dying to ask you guys. Where the Titans are edited to look like they are interviewing Ami and Yumi. It's cute. So you guys have blown up here in the States with theme songs and now your own TV show. Do you play the Teen Titans theme at your concerts? And much like Teen Titans, the show, of course, features many songs performed by Puffy Amiyumi. <laughs> including the show's theme song, which is a bang.
one point in the theme song, they're like counting down like two, three, four, but they say eins, zwei, drei, which my pronunciation is probably very bad, but that's German for two, three, four. I don't know why this song that already features English and Japanese lyrics is also like, let's throw some German in there. Fuck it. I don't understand it. I just wanted to mention it because it's weird. The real Ami and Yumi also briefly appear in the show in these short live action sections. These sort of like bookend each episode and are like maybe 30 seconds max. They're extremely short, but they're kind of fun and silly. It feels a lot like they just kind of gave Ami and Yumi a camera and were like, I don't know, mess around, do whatever you want and it's just them like fucking around. And I think it's kind of fun. The whole show has this like, I don't know, how about this? Is this an idea like sort of vibe? And I, d and I dig it. They're truly just like throwing things at the wall. And it's like, is this, is this gonna work? Maybe, who knows? I don't know why, but at this time, Cartoon Network really wanted to make Puffy happen. So let's get into a little more of the actual show. Like I said, Ami and Yumi are portrayed as like fictionalized versions of themselves their cartoon characters loosely based on the real performers. Ami is the more like bubbly, trad wife, girly girl type, and Yumi is the more like tomboy, not like other girls girl, hot topic, big titty goth GF type. They're opposites, but in spite of their differences, they're best friends and they, you know, they care about each other. It's Starfire and Raven, it's May and Tylee. It's a dynamic you've seen before, but it works, it's fun. The other main character in the cartoon is Kaz, Puffy's manager slash tour bus driver. I don't think he's based on a real person, just sort of a wacky character that rounds out the cast and gives them someone else to interact with. Kaz is always up to wacky shenanigans and coming up with get-rich-quick schemes and new ways of monetizing Puffy. He's offered there to cause conflict in the show. Ami is played by Janice Kuei, who I know as the voice of Jenny from My Life as a Teenage Robot, another animated series from the 2000s which is great. Yumi is played by Greg Griffin, who you know as Azula, Sam Manson. She's in fucking everything. You've heard her voice a million times, and uh, she does a good job. Kaz is played by Keon Young, who I'm not super familiar with, but he's done a ton of voice acting, he's in a bunch of stuff. You've probably heard him in something. So of the three main characters, Two of them are actually played by Asian actors, which for a cartoon from 2004 is actually a pretty good uh, record. At best, it's still kind of weird because these aren't just like made up cartoon characters. These are based on real life people that actually exist. So it's kind of weird to have uh, one of them be voiced by a white girl. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna pretend that's okay, but it was 2004 and it definitely could have been much worse for this time period. <laughs> Does everything from this show from almost 20 years ago hold up super well? No. But also, I'm not really the authority on any of this, so that I'm just gonna we're just gonna move on. The show is very episodic in nature, and I don't really actually have a lot to say on the, the episode to episode plots or storylines, especially because of how the show is structured. In a normal half hour show, you usually have around 22 minutes of like actual episode to account for commercials. And then a lot of cartoons like SpongeBob will usually be split into two episodes. They're around 11 minutes each. Hi Hi Puffy Ami Yumi has three episodes per half hour. And when you account for the theme song and the little short live action sketches that bookend each episode, you're looking at like six, maybe seven minutes most of like story before we're moving on to the next thing, which is not a lot of time to tell a super complex or deep storyline. It's barely enough time for like a short adventure. Like I'd call most of these episodes like wacky scenarios or shenanigans. I don't even know if like short adventure or short story is like quite covers it. Most episodes are like they're touring around the world and they go to a new location. Something wacky happens there because it's a culture they don't understand. That's the episode. Or like Kaz gets up to some wacky money-making scheme. I had a pair of robots made to look and behave exactly like you. Now you girls can be in two money-making places at once. That causes conflict. The episode, then that's it. Or like they have some weird interaction with like a super fan. Like there's a recurring character, Harmony, who is like this mega super fan and like causes them trouble. That's like another one of the types of plots of episodes is like 
dealing with the consequences and like pressures of having this mega stardom and huge fan base that like I think is more a thing in the show than in real life. Not to say that Puffy doesn't have fans, obviously they do, but like if I saw them on the street as a little kid watching this show even, I probably still wouldn't recognize them. But I'm stupid, so you know, that could be it too. Like in terms of actual like storylines and plot, like I don't really have a lot to say. I think this show is fun and goofy and I enjoy it from like a nostalgic level but there's like not really much to analyze here. I'm more just interested in the fact that this thing exists at all and that it's like such a relic of this specific time period. The animation is fairly simple but it's stylized. They're kind of going for like a chibi style look. For this show I think it works fine. It's not gonna blow you away or anything but like for a silly animated comedy it's it's passable obviously it's got very heavy anime influence but it's not the same as like teen titans or avatar where it like looks like a traditional anime it still feels like a cartoon network show but it undoubtedly has a lot of japanese influence which makes sense it's about a Japanese band. I think the show is also done digitally, unlike Teen Titans, which is hand-drawn. Digital can still look really good, and I think it looks fine here, but I personally have more of a preference for more traditional hand-drawn style animation. But the franchise does not end here, because Hi Hi Puffy Yami Yumi also had video games. <laughs> That's right, they made not one, but two whole games based on Hi Hi Puffy Ami Yumi. Kaznapped for the Game Boy Advance and The Genie and the Amp for the Nintendo DS. While having one GBA game might not be that impressive, they gave out Game Boy Advance games to pretty much anything back in the day. But to also have a game on the DS, that is interesting. And these games were released apart, they're two separate things. It wasn't like the same game badly ported across two different systems. Two completely distinct games based on Hi Hi Puffy Yami Yumi. That means that on more than one occasion, somebody had to say, hey, we should make a video game based on that cartoon that's based on that Japanese pop band. And then someone else had to say, good idea. This is Kaznapped, released in 2005 by D3 publisher and Cartoon Network Interactive and developed by Ultron. The plot is very simple. Kaz is kidnapped, or Kaznapped, kill me, by Puffy Amiyumi's super fan Harmony. And you gotta go on a world tour to save him. The game is a fairly simple platformer with some puzzle elements. You have to switch back and forth between Ami and Yumi to traverse each level, utilizing their different abilities to overcome different obstacles. Yumi is stronger and can push these blocks and also fight enemies. But Ami is better at platforming and she has a double jump, a glide, even a grappling hook. Grappling hook! Because every good game has to have a grappling hook. Each world is made up of three platforming stages and then one Galaga-esque flying shoot 'em up stage. Where you fly around in Puffy Ami Yumi's tour bus, which apparently can fly. They fly now! You shoot a bunch of enemies until eventually a rejected Cuphead boss shows up and then you shoot that until the level ends. The Danny Phantom Ultimate Enemy Game Boy Advance game had an extremely similar level structure. Which makes sense since that game was also made by the same developer. Check out my video on Danny Phantom games for more on that. Ultimate Enemy felt a little bit more polished to me and it also had like a proper level select so that was nice. The character animations are mostly pretty good. I like the sprite work here. They do a good job capturing the personality of the characters and there's a fair amount of references to specific episodes. Like this charging bull enemy is straight out of this one episode where they become bullfighters. I love the progression of the different worlds here. It makes no sense whatsoever. We go from America to Latin America to Slovakia and then to Desert Island. Of course, nat nat naturally, all, all, all of the wonders of the world. There is a tutorial in the game, but it's like hidden in the menu, so I spent much of my time like fumbling around the controls. It took me forever to realize that you're not supposed to attack these like fans. You're just supposed to avoid them. It's, it's a licensed game for the Game Boy Advance. Uh, I bet you it would uh, entertain you for a car ride when going to, going to see Grandma and Grandpa. Or, uh, you know, you, if you rented it from Blockbuster, you could play it and then be like, cool, and then give it back at the end of the week. <laughs> 
I played a little more after recording some gameplay. There was a water level that didn't suck, so, you know, that's nice. And a bit of variety, that's always good. And then there was this jungle level that had, like, a whole bunch of verticality, and I just completely got stuck on it, and then the game crashed. Which meant that I would have had to go back, do this whole section again, back from the flying level, which I don't want to do. And also the game might crash again, so I'm... That's, that's as far as I got. But also, you can pet the cat. So, 10 out of 10, best game ever, better than Tears of the Kingdom. The Genie and the Amp for the Nintendo DS, released in 2006. Again, by Cartoon Network Interactive and D3 Publisher. This one was developed by Sensory Sweep Studios. So, as you can see, I'm filming in the most uh, efficient way possible. Because I'm a true gamer and have the ultimate gaming setup. So the plot of this one is that Ami and Yumi are struggling to make musical fusion. Kaz gets a bunch of random music equipment from a pawn shop to try to help them out. Turns out there's an amp with a genie in it. Just like a genie! <laughs> Get it? Because it sounds like genie in the lamp, but it's genie in the amp instead because music and they play music. He's like, I'll grant you a wish or whatever. Standard genie procedure. They're like, hey, we need help finding our inspiration, our musical inspiration. And he's like, okay, first thing you got to do is go to this mountain and talk to this old guy. And I didn't get much farther than this part. So I don't know how it all plays out. Visually, I think this game looks pretty good. It translates the 2D art style from the show into 3D in a way that doesn't suck. Which, as we know from Tommy Turner over here, is not so easy. So for a Nintendo DS game, it looks pretty good. That's kind of most of the nice things that I have to say about this one. The game is like an arcade-style beat-em-up, and it's very clunky. You've got touch controls, which is always great. And you can, like, strum the guitar to do different combos touching different strings in like specific order. I couldn't really get this to work properly. And at one point I think the game just gave up on me. It's okay, you can try more later. Okay, did it just did it just give up on me? I could I couldn't do it. Or you could just use the buttons. The buttons also play the strings. So I just ended up mashing buttons and felt like that was about as effective as trying to do any of the combos the game tried to teach me. There's not really a block or dodge or anything, so you kind of just have to hope that you don't get hit and then hit the enemies fast until they die. There's like not really much strategy going on here. The movement is really clunky too. It's really easy to get stuck on random objects and walls and stuff when you're just like trying to traverse the levels normally. When you die, you have to start this long ass level over again from the beginning, but then it also remembers all the enemies you killed. So you're just like walking through this barren, empty level. And it's like, why, why not just spawn me back closer to where I died? So I don't have to walk. Like if I'm going to redo the level, like, there's no challenge to it, so it's like, why make me do that? It just, it's, everything about this game feels very tedious. Gameplay also becomes very repetitive very quickly. The controls are just not very good, and it's just, it's just not fun to play. Despite being theoretically much more complex uh, than the Game Boy Advance game, this one just feels so much more low effort. I probably would play more of Kaznapped if I had a copy that didn't crash frequently, but I have no interest in playing more of this game. Never trust a genie. So, sorry. Game not good. And that's the extent of the High High Puffy Yami Yumi video game franchise. Nothing mind-blowing here. Kaznapped is not bad. Maybe check it out if you find it at a thrift store or something. But Genie and the Amp, you can skip that one. Though I'm probably the only person that is even remotely interested in, in these games at all and really it's just for the novelty of, of the fact that they made them in the first place. The show is already such a time capsule but if you want a true artifact of what the early 2000s were like look no further than Hi Hi Puffy Yami Yumi Kaznapped for the Game Boy Advance. The Game Boy game based on the American cartoon based on the Japanese band that did the theme song for Teen Titans. Early 2000s. What a time. 
Hi Hi Puffy on Miyumi was inevitably canceled in 2006, but it had a pretty good run for something that was so weird and so unique. The show is hard to find on DVD and only has like a handful of episodes released in North America, and they're very rare and very expensive. However, the entire series is currently uploaded to YouTube by the user K Koopa Nostalgia. So if you want to check out the show, that's probably your best bet. As strange as Hi Hi is, it wasn't entirely unprecedented. Puffy Yumi actually had another show a few years prior called Pa 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 Puffy. It was a variety show that aired in Japan from 97 to 2002. <laughs> Why indeed? I do not understand this show. Puffy Amiyumi continue to make music to this day, with their most recent album releasing in 2021, I believe. The stuff from the early 2000s is a little bit pop punk, but their style can also vary wildly from song to song. Sometimes it's a bit more pop, sometimes it's a bit more like ska, uh, but if you like music from this era, you'll probably enjoy Puffy. So I say check them out. There is something just so fascinating to me about this show. A show that could only exist in this specific point in time. When the West was first becoming fascinated by anime and Japanese culture, and didn't quite understand it, but really wanted to be a part of it anyways. And it's just one of the strangest ways that a cartoon could ever get made. But for some reason, it worked. Like the theme song says, anything is possible. This video is loosely connected to a larger retrospective I'm doing on the original Teen Titans series. We're going through every single episode of the show week by week. Next week, we're starting with season three. So subscribe if you don't want to miss out. That's it for me. We'll see you again soon.